Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming to class. So we're going to start seated and please feel free to sit on your blanket if you'd like. You're going to need a strap nearby. Um, so find yourself getting comfortable. I'm just going to take a quick sip of water. And uh, whichever way feels good for you to sit. You don't have to sit cross-legged, all of those things you already know, hopefully. <sighs> and then just kind of bring the shoulders up to your ears and let them come down. And take them up. Squeeze them back and down. Good, one more time, take them up. And let them come down. And today I'm just going to read um, a really small quote uh, by Maria Popova. And um, she says, we will lose everything we love, including our lives. So we might as well love without fear. For to fear a certainty is wasted energy that siphons life of aliveness. And then Ram Das says, everything in your life is there as a vehicle for your transformation. So use it. And I like that one in particular. <laughs> everything in your life is a vehicle for your transformation. So sit well. Uh, this morning's breath work is going to be alternate nostril breathing. I'm pretty sure at least those of you who are live with me right now know how to do it. Um, if you don't, I'm going to do a couple of rounds uh, explaining. And then uh, if you know it, go ahead and start. And what I love about alternate nostril breathing, also known as Nadi Shodhana, uh, is that it really seems to balance uh, right and left brain. For me in particular, it brings me out of a stress response or out of that sympathetic nervous system and brings me into the parasympathetic nervous system where everything feels more even uh, in my body, my mind, um, my heart. Um, so uh, with that, if you are stuffy, this could be difficult. And if you have a uh, a deviated septum, I understand it's it's even more difficult. If you have a deviated septum, instead of breathing in one side out the other, you're gonna breathe in and out one side and then switch in and out the other side. Uh, I understand that that helps. All right, so sit well. You're gonna take one hand, usually it is the right hand. You're gonna use your thumb to the right nostril, Your uh, ring finger or pinky and ring, whatever feels right to you on the left nostril. So just take a nice inhale to start. And then close off your right nostril with your thumb, exhale through the left side. Inhale through the left side. Close that side off with your ring finger, exhale right. Don't force this breath. Inhale right. Close the right side off. Exhale left. Inhale left. Close that side off. Exhale right. And then continue at your own pace. If you are feeling up for it, you can start to deepen the breath, just not forcing it. Watch the jaw here. Try to keep it soft.
bringing yourself back into balance here. A few more rounds. Last round, everybody. Make sure it's a full round, both sides. And then let the hand go and just pause here for a moment. Taking a nice deep breath in both through both the nostrils. Good. One more here. And exhale. Good, and then open the eyes, everybody, and maybe just take a moment to see if you notice feeling a little different there or a little shift in uh, your energy or um, your balance, your feeling of balance. All right, so go ahead and straighten the legs um, and come into a nice, easy staff pose, Dandasana. Today, we're going to play with the hamstrings. Please be mindful. Um, the hamstrings are at the back of the legs, right? And they attach at the sit bone. So if you put your, if you leaned on either side and sat on your fingers for a second and felt the bone underneath the ischial tuberosity, you would feel just to the outside of that ischial tuberosity where the hamstrings um, actually come up and attach. And then they come down at the back of the leg uh, uh, to either side of our knee. So, right, sometimes knee issues uh, can have something to do with the hamstrings, sometimes the quadriceps. Uh, so there you have it. So find a really solid da uh, dandasana. Put the hands down on the floor. You might be at fingertips. Roll the elbows back. Roll the shoulders back. Lift up super tall, everybody. And then fire up the legs. So when the legs are straight and we are engaging the quadriceps or when the legs are straight, often the quadriceps will get engaged. The hamstrings actually stretch in this position. Roll the shoulders back. Inhale, take the arms up. I know I try to fit like so much information in and <laughs> sometimes it works. Good. Breathe, everybody. Good, solid dandasana. Breathe. And exhale. Let that go. Whew. Good. And then place your hands back on the floor. And whether you're on a like a little slippery surface or you're on your mat, I just want you to lean back slightly and slide your heels back toward your hips any amount. And I'll turn sideways. So on a slippy surface like your carpet or the floor, this could be easy. On your mat, you're going to have to keep it light, right? The, the, the drag of the heel light. When you bend the knees, there's the hamstrings. So the hamstrings allow us to bend the knee and also can help with extending the front of the hip, which is kind of interesting. And then just straighten them out again. Roll your shoulders back. Try to press the heels in just a little and squeeze it up and feel. You can actually feel the muscles engage. It might not be a lot. And then slide back down. Just one more like that. So I want you to slide, slide. Whoop. <laughs> Here comes my mat. Slide it up. Squeeze. And then let go. And then come back to Dandasana. Come back to Dandasana. Lean back a little bit. Pull the shoulders back behind you, open up the chest, bend or slide one foot up, and then just extend it out and lower down, <laughs> right? Little bit of quad and hamstring. So slide it in, 
straighten it up and slowly lower it down. One more here. Squeeze it in, everybody. Straighten it up. It doesn't have to be high. And lower that back down and shake it out. Good. Lean back. Other side. So you're going to slide it in. Sometimes, by the way, it helps if you think about the part of the body that we're trying to engage. So think of the hamstring and then straighten it. There's the quad. Slowly lower down. Good. Slide it in. Just think about squeezing, even if you don't feel it. Straighten it up. Whew. And lower it down. Got one more right here. Slide it in. Reach it up. And lower it down. Whew. Good. Shake that out. Grab your strap. We'll turn sideways again so you can see what in the world I'm doing. You're going to take that strap around one foot. And then come on down to your back. Your other foot, your, so I've got the strap around my right leg. My left foot is on the floor. So the first thing I want you to do is just take the right leg up. Straighten the knee as much as you're able without any pain. Don't hyperextend. Flex your foot. The quadricep engages the hamstring, the back of the leg stretches, right? So we got that, we got that figured out. And then breathe. And then take the leg about quarter of the way down or about where it's level with your other knee. Strap in each hand. I want you to pull the knee toward your chest, but resist. So I'm actually pulling my strap, but pushing back away with my foot. And then do the same thing, resist as you straighten the leg. So again, really easy hamstring work. Bring it in with resistance and push it out. Now, if there's a certain bend of the knee that really creates some pain, just don't go so deep, it's okay, right? And straighten, push, push, push. One more here, pull in, pull in, pull in and push out hold that right here that same diagonal your left foot is on the floor the shoulders drop down to the floor i've got a pretty good uh pretty good tension on the strap and i want you to push into your left foot like you're gonna lift your hips but don't lift your hips there is there again, hopefully you feel the hamstring engagement on the left side. So there's the work of the hamstrings. They're contracted. They're gonna help you with that bent knee. And then if we lift even a half of an inch off the floor, the hamstrings are getting a bunch of work. Good, lower that down. Release the strap from that foot, just change sides. So we have that left leg straight up, the knee relatively straight here. You can lower the leg, by the way, right? If you can access a straight leg, because we want the tendons to be able to stretch. If we're always bent, then the muscle won't have um, the work that it needs. So nice little stretch here. Shoulders are soft. Don't over grip your strap and breathe, and then lower the leg part way, pull on the strap, and resist as you draw that knee into chest, and then resist as you push it away. One of the things I find interesting here is I kind of watch the line of my knee as it comes in or presses out. Does it kind of wobble in or wobble out, can it go straight in and straight out? Good, be sure you press that away. Last one here, just bring it in under resistance and press it away and then hold that press, right? I'm really pushing my foot into, my, uh, into the strap. Feel your right foot on the floor and then push into your right leg to feel the hamstring engage. I love this because it's so simple. If you cramp up, by the way, just like straighten and then come back in. So 
So push the right foot in, and then if you can, drop the shoulders to the floor. Push into your foot just a little. I'm only lifting a half inch or an inch. Push into that strap and lower down. Whew. Good, and just release and let some blood flow come back to your, <laughs> back to your uh, fingers. Whew. All right, so grab the strap, put it around your right foot. Feel that. I want you to hold that strap. Maybe take the ends of your strap and just wrap your hands around it a couple of times so you don't have to grip so much. And then bend the knee. And I want you to tap the heel to the floor with resistance and then just bring it back up. So you're going to tap and bring it up. So again, hamstring, tap. Bring it up. Again, knee issues. Don't pull on the strap so much. See if that makes a difference. This is three, four. We're keeping this hamstring in contraction because we aren't straightening the leg. And five. And then just hold. Bring it up to 90 degrees. Straight in the left leg. So you got right leg at 90-ish. Left leg down on the floor, press the left leg down and tap for five more. So one and two, you may feel the back of the leg. Three, you got it. And four, so far so good. And five, good. Release to 90, push against the strap, resist and let that go, straighten the leg. Shake them both out. Bend both knees. Wrap your left foot. Come to 90 degrees. Flex your foot. Feel that resistance and tap and lift. So, so far, this is the easier version. Your right foot is on the floor. I'm keeping a, quite a bit of tension on that strap for and five. Good. If that one was okay, straighten the leg. Here we go for five more. Tap. Resist. Tap. Resist. This is a little bicep work too, right? And resist. Good. Two more. Tap. Resist. Last one. Tap. And resist. And then release the strap. Straighten your legs. Go ahead and put your strap aside for now. Bend both knees, both feet to the floor. This will not be uncommon or unfamiliar to you guys and gals. Um, nice neutral pelvis. So don't flatten the back for now. Just kind of keep that pelvis neutral and press into both feet as if you were going to lift your hips. Okay, so press and you'll feel those babies Woo. and straighten if you cramp up right good so press into your feet press 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 and then pull the heels back isometrically and then just release it do that one again push down into the floor as if you were going to lift like you should feel yourself just starting to make that move and then pull your heels back Ooh, say good morning to your hamstrings and release. All right, so this one, push into your feet, pull the heels back. Now I want you to lengthen the tailbone. Remember maybe last class we talked about the glute muscles kind of feathering into the hamstrings or the hamstrings reaching into that attachment at the sit bones. So pull back. Lengthen and just lift up super slow and then release super slow and release that push and pull. Three more, no, four more, just like that. Feet down, heels back, lengthen your tailbone, slowly lift. I'm not going into a big old bridge here. And then slowly release and let go. Three more. Your hands can go wherever they feel good. And pull the heels back. Push the feet into the floor. 
Feather the glute muscle into the hamstring and lift. Oh, yeah, baby. Love to feel those hamstrings work. And lower down slow. Let that go. We got two left. If you need to, give the legs a break by straightening them. Good. Last one or two more. Push down. Pull the heels back. Lengthen the tailbone toward the heels. And lift up. You feel all this work happening. You can feel those hamstrings of your own if you want. And then lower it down. Release fully. Last one, I promise. Here we go. Tuck. Pull the heels back, press the feet down, and lift up, right? So that's your bridge pose, right? The tailbone lengthens, the heels press back, the hips rise, but not so much that we feel it somewhere else. So as you hold this bridge pose, again, knee issues, you can take your feet out a little further. I want you to press into the ball mounts and lift all your toes off the floor. Good. Keep lengthening the tailbone, pressing through the glutes, hamstrings. Don't over squeeze. And then lower your toes, lower your hips. Woo. Bring your right knee to your chest. Hold on underneath your a knee and straighten your left leg. Stretch that out. Now with your hands interlaced behind your knee, I want you to push that leg away and then just bring it in. Good, push away. And bring the knee in, last one here. Just push and bring that in. Straighten that leg down to the floor. Bring your left knee in, hold behind, easy stretch first. And then same thing, push it away. Bring it in and push. Bring it in. Last one, push. And bring it in and then fully let go there just shake it out kind of circle out your ankles and then come on to your belly come on to your bellies <clears throat> so uh, go ahead and take the torso down right and let yourself be comfortable here lengthen both legs and then press down on the pubic bone why do we do that right so when we stretch the hamstrings um or when we engage the hamstrings um it can lift the butt muscles or the butt or, or anteriorly tilt the pelvis really so i want you to press that down so that we can find the quadricep muscle stretch and engage the hammies so here we are press down to the right leg leave that there flex your left foot and just squeeze it up notice if you tend to splay out through the knee see if you can keep the center of your thigh on the floor and notice that now again please don't go into pain i know some of you working with some knee stuff so you might stay out here a little bit further if you can, I want you to pulse it in slow toward the glute and then just release. Pulse it in and squeeze and release. Notice if that left hip is rising up. If it is, see if you can ground that hip more. Pulse in. This is a slow pulse. Last one. Pulse it up and then come to roughly 90. Push the pelvis or the pubic bone to the floor. See if you can lift the knee any amount. And breathe. And then let go and straighten the leg. Other side, we're pressing the pubic bone down. Bend the knee. Just find where your range of motion is. Both sides of the hips pressing in. Good. And then slow. Pulse it in. And release it. Bring it in, pulse, and release. Squeeze it in. It's going to be your level here. And four, big squeeze. And last one, squeeze in, everybody. 
And then release. Whew. Hammies love to cramp, by the way, just so you know you're not alone. Your leg, your right leg about 90 degrees, press down through the hips, flex your foot, see if you can lift your knee any amount and breathe. Good, lower that down. One, you're gonna stay down low. Two, you're gonna come up on your elbows. We're almost done with the floor work, so hang in there. If you're on elbows, just watch that lower back. I really want you to squeeze that belly in and then just bend both legs. Now, if this is way too much for your low backs, I know at least one of you this is, I want you to come back down so the upper body is low. Squeeze both in and lower three more, but it's purposeful. Feel the hamstrings and lower. And four big squeeze. Last one, squeeze in everybody, hold here. If you can, remember you can be down low, takes that pressure off the back. Breathe, five, four, three, two, one, and let go. Ooh, isn't that something? <laughs> Good, lower down everybody, and then press up. Again, if your knees can handle it, press back to child's pose and we'll release that low back uh, from any yickiness that happened there. Deep breath. And exhale it out. Come on up. We're coming to um, a low lunge. So grab your blanket. And let's make some nice cushion for the knees. And then grab your blocks and they are at the front of your mat. Once you got all that going on, go ahead and step forward with your right uh, foot. And the first interesting thing about a lunge, right, is if we're smack on top of the kneecap, that can be bothersome for some people. So I want you to slide the left knee back and come into a lunge that roughly gets your ankle and your knee uh, on top of each other. But then it is a slight tuck of the pelvis. You've heard me say that a, a whole bunch of times so that we just don't oh, put too much pressure at the front of our hip joint. So a little bit of a tuck or a little bit of a kind of cat uh, move there. Top of your back foot presses into the mat and notice just doing that will deepen your stretch. So one, you're here, two, you know what's coming, right? If we bend that back knee, there's the hamstring. I've got my blocks up nice and high so I can stay lifted and then lower and lift and squeeze. This is three. Don't do it if it really hurts, please, please. Or even if it hurts a little, four. And last one, squeeze and hold if you can. You cramp up, you let go, right? One, you're here. Two, you're gonna take the left hand, same side hand. You're just gonna see if your foot is in reach and hold on to that foot. And let go. Ooh. Good, slide everything back, release your right side, shake out your hips and bring in your left leg or bring forward your left leg. Same thing here, right? The right knee slides back a little bit so you're above the kneecap, but your front leg is in a nice little alignment there. You're feeling that first stretch, tiny tuck of the pelvis. You'll feel the front uh, quadriceps stretch a little more. Nice deep breath. And when, if you're ready, you're gonna bend and squeeze and then let go. Good, squeeze and let go. This is three and four and five, squeeze, squeeze. Hold if you can, if you cramp, let go. And if you want, reach back, same side hand. 
see if you can find that foot. So again, we do so much to strengthen the quadriceps, the front of the legs, but we don't get to stretch them a whole bunch. And this is obviously a quad stretch. Whew. Good, let go everybody. Move your blocks out of the way for a moment. Slide your left foot back. Come to balancing table. Um, you know on balancing table, if you wanna come to elbows, maybe skip the hands, that's okay. Good, so nice tone. Step back with your right leg, lift your right leg off the floor. Remember what we said, right? Leg straight, there's the quads. Leg bent, there's the hamstrings. So let's start easy balancing table, left arm and right leg. See if you go to a party and somebody starts talking anatomy, you can go, I know all kinds of stuff about the hamstrings. Let me share <laughs> and see how fast they walk away. <laughs> All right, hand down, everybody, release that side. Maybe stretch back. And then come on up. Left side, tone in through the belly, left hand down, right arm reaches, leg is straight. Breathe. And release. Shake it out, tone in through the belly, right leg out lifts. This time optional, it bends. Hard part here is not over lifting the right side. So imagine you're gonna push your knee to the wall that's behind you. Flex the foot, left arm out. Ooh, you wouldn't think this would be harder. But it is. Release. Take that down, left side, lift, bend. You can stay right here. Watch this splaying out of the knee. And imagine you're trying to touch your knee to the back wall. Keep the quad, the front of the leg long. And release, holy moly. Press back, plant your hands. Downward facing dog. Once you're in down dog, let's bend those knees and stretch out the back of the legs. That's it. Good, pause on one side. So one knee bent, the other leg fairly straight or all the way straight. Plant the hands, feel your fingertips press in. Breathe, and then release that bent knee and take the leg up, three leg, downward facing dog. <sighs> release that foot to the floor, switch sides so the other knee is bent. Good integrity, everybody. And release that leg, take it up. <sighs> and release, Ooh. Good, lower the knees to the floor Ooh. and child's pose or puppy stretch and breathe. Table pose <laughs> to downward facing dog, <laughs> so funny. And take your feet wide. And walk your hands back. We all do this one all the time. Bend your knees. Press your knees out to the sides. Bring your hands to your knees. Look up. And then stand up. Whew. Good. Shake that out, everybody. You can leave your blanket there for now. Just come on up to the front of your mat. Or one side or other of the blanket. And curl your wrists. Give them a little squeeze. Give them a little shake out. And then find your feet roughly hips width apart. And imagine drawing the uh, inner heels toward each other so that the shins come a little bit closer and the knees go from the inside to the outside, right? So it's this really subtle little move here. Inhale, reach up. 
Exhale your hands to your heart. Come on down, do a squat. Once you're there, take your hands to your knees and look at your feet. Look at your knees, everything parallel to each other. And then lengthen your tailbone down, right? So from this anterior, big anterior tilt that most of us are in when we lean forward like this, we're going to lengthen the tailbone, sit back on the, on the uh, back of the heels, inner knee to outer knee, breathe, and then release the hands to the heart. And imagine that you're going to push your feet right through your mat, go up, come up really slow. Yeah. Good. Hands stay down. Go down really slow. Push into your feet to come up. Think hamstrings. When we bend, there's the hammies having to work. When we straighten, there's the quads that have to work. I find that just so fascinating. All right. Come on down one more. And push up and shake it out. So when we, for most of us, and it may not work for everybody, but when we drag those heels in isometrically, you've heard me say it's like taking the toes as if they were jar lids, right? And you're going to unscrew the jar lids. You're going to open them up. The heels come in slightly isometrically. And then we have this like solid, solid base of where we should be in our standing poses. All right, so take that and come to the front of your mat. You've got your blocks near where you can grab them. Find mountain pose, the heels slightly come in. And then just imagine that you're going to slide one foot forward and one foot back, like you would actually do this, but the feet aren't moving. I know this is so weird, but imagine pulling one leg forward, one leg back. Feel the legs work and then switch like you're going to walk, but the knees won't bend and switch and switch. Just feel the work and then release. Inhale, take it up. Exhale, forward fold. Your hands come to your blocks. Breathe. Nice little L shape here. Pull one heel back isometrically and try to push the other foot forward isometrically. Release, switch. Try to pull one foot back while the other foot's going forward, all while not moving. Release, switch. Do you feel it? Right? It's kind of cool. Who knew? Release, last one. Pull and push. And then release. Bend both knees and step back with your right leg. Now you're in a high lunge. You can stay here or you can lower your knee to your sweet little blanket. In this lunge, both legs are active, but I want you to pull isometrically the front heel back. So just pull back and you can have your blocks up nice and high. Pull that back as if you were going to slide that leg back. Now fire up the back leg so that leg is straight and breathe. And then release that, but draw the energy back toward the center. Take your hands to your knee. Come on up. Nice high or low lunge and take the arms up. Big deep breath. See if you can find the lovely kind of levelness with the pelvis, back leg active. Exhale, hands down. Walk your blocks forward a little bit and then step forward. You can walk the blocks even more forward so you're more in an L shape and pull one leg back while the other leg pulls forward. Switch, switch, and switch. And then release, walk those blocks back, soften your knees, step back with your left leg. Here we are again. You've got a solid lunge here, knee up or knee down. And then try to pull the front heel back. Yep. 
Breathe. Release that pull. Just do it one more time. And release. And then find that kind of middle space again where the legs are active. Hand comes to knee, the torso comes up, and the arms go up. <sighs> nice deep breath, everybody. <sighs> Exhale, hands down. Walk your blocks forward, step forward. Good, feet or hips width apart. I want you to bend both knees. Press the knees out away from each other just a little bit. <sighs> Start to lengthen your tailbone. Now you're on fingertips. Now your hands are to your heart. Tailbone is long. Push the heels isometrically in as the toes go out isometrically. And stand all the way up. Yeah, just take a little walk around. And tell me if you're feeling your legs. Right? Good. Just shake them out. Just shake them out. And then move your blanket out of the way. So those of you who have been with me a, a long time or even a short time, you know how important I think leg strength, hip strength, glute strength is to our daily lives. If these aren't strong, if we're not using the glutes, if our hips muscles aren't helping to protect the joints, um, it makes it much harder to get through our days, I think, or maybe a little more prone to injury. So hence, hence why I'm always working it. Okay, but hammies are ignored a lot. So that's why we're there. So you're going to take your blocks. I got to like keep my head straight here. You're going to take both of your blocks and you're going to stack them side by side. So I've got them on the second level. I'm putting them together and I'm going to stack them side by side to create this really nice base, this wide base. And <clears throat> then I'm going to gingerly make my way down so that, so the blocks are on my left side. My right foot's going to come forward. My left knee is going to land on the blocks. Okay. It's like if you've seen these runners, you know, they're getting ready to start their race and then they lift up kind of thing. So you're here and your block should feel steady enough that you could come up in this nice uh, 90 degree pose. So if you feel steady, the knee is okay. I want you to just tuck the pelvis, lean back a little bit. What are we doing? We're stretching the quad. We're engaging the hamstring, right? So you could lean back, just don't go too far. You can get a good stretch here. The pelvis is tucked so that we can lock in here. Breathe. And then release that, take the hands forward. Your toes are flipped under. All I want you to do is lift the knee and lower the knee and lift, lower. When you lift, squeeze, lower. Two more, lift and lower. Just one more, lift, lower. Take your hands back to your knee. So one, you're gonna do the lift lower with hands on the floor. Two, your hands come to your knee. You're gonna lift, tap and lower. Lift and lower. Three, down, four, down. Last one, five. On hands to the floor, step back to downward facing dog. Lower your knees, everybody, and just switch your blocks to the other side of your mat. And bring the left foot forward and bring your right knee to the blocks. Okay. So you're here. Bring your hands to your knee. Tuck your pelvis. And just lean back a little. If you can. 
You should feel, hopefully, you feel really balanced here. Not a whole lot going on. The two blocks stacked side by side give the block some more stability. Deep breath. And then lean forward, hands to the floor. Come up on fingertips. You can do fists too, by the way. I know this is kind of a low uh, reach here. And straighten the knee and lower. Good. And straight. Best you can, straight knee and then soft knee. Through four and five. Lower the knee. One, you're going to do that five more times. Two, you're going to take your hands to the knee. The pelvis is neutral. You're going to plant that foot and lift. One, two, hoo -hoo, three, and four, and five. Lower the knee, hands down. Downward facing dog, everybody. Lower your knees to the floor and come into either puppy or child's or anything else that feels good. You can even use your blocks. Let your forehead rest on your blocks. A deep breath. So we're going to do that one more time. I'm going to give you a third option. One, you're here and your knee is down with your hands on the floor. You're just lifting lowering knee. Two, the blocks are here and you're going to take your hand to your knee, lift and lower. Three, if those two versions were fine for you, you're going to take a block at its lowest level. Right leg forward. You can use your other block for your hands. Your left knee goes to your block. And try to get it so that your knee is pretty centered on the block. And you're here. So it's a little bit lower. You would lift and lower here. Or lift and lower from here. This is all work in the leg. Strength, glute strength. Here we go. So lift, lower, two, and three. I want you to go slow on the way down. Four, go slow. Last one, five. Down you go. This time lift up, reach up. We're back to a lunge, everybody. And hands to knee. And lower down. Hands down. Down dog, switch your blocks to the other side. Step forward with your left leg, lower your right knee to the block so that you have your uh, distance. <sighs> Hand to knee, remember you can stay right here. You can stay here and lift or let's come up one, Two, I want you to see if you can slow the descent. Three, four, and five. And then hold that. Bring the arms up. Let's get a nice lunge, solid lunge here. And then exhale, hands down, everyone. Downward facing dog. Hold right here or child's pose and breathe. <sighs> Solid upper body. Heels slightly move in as the toes isometrically try to reach out. They don't move. Breathe. And then take your feet wide and walk your hands back. Stay here for a moment. Your hands can go to your shins, by the way. This time the knees are a bit softer. Heels in, toes out isometrically. Hamstring stretch. And breathe. 
And can you find length in the torso? Maybe the hands reach forward, the sit bones lift, and we stretch into the hamstrings, but don't overdo it. Bend your knees, everybody, hands to knees, come on up. Ooh. And just uh, go ahead and grab a block. <sighs> I was going to say, just let our equilibrium come back, but let's do it with a block. Good. Walk the feet in a little bit. Squeeze your block. So I find in yoga, as with other things, we can overdo, right? And we may think our hamstrings are tight. And so we stretch them and we stretch them and we stretch them. And they're not tight. They're actually loose. Uh, and they might not be strong. So um, a lot of, or at least one other teacher I know says, forget about tight and loose. Are they strong or weak? Are they stable or unstable, right? So can we find the stability? So inner ankles move toward each other so that you feel those big toe mounts working. We're giving that block a good squeeze. The knees are soft, but ideally straight, okay? And then lift all your toes. Keep pressing the inner ankles toward each other as if you were squeezing a block between the ankles. And then imagine opening up the feet or opening up those jar lids. Again, as if you could drag the feet out to the sides with the heels dropping in a little bit more. Good, lower the toes, relax the legs. Now feel that's the balance part, right? Because we know we don't want to over squeeze. So now we have mountain pose, shoulders back, take the arms up and find your breath. And exhale, release. Go ahead and take that block out and get it out of the way. <clears throat> All right, so this one, again, please be mindful. We're going to do two variations, or we're going to do <clears throat> two ideas of this. So right leg forward, your left foot is back, <clears throat> but not very far, right? So that when you bend both knees, you're kind of here, right? This one, you don't go deep. You don't go deep. We're not doing a lunge. We're keeping the weight at the center of your front foot. You're looking forward or forward and down. Your hands can be at your hips or they can be out to the sides. And all I want you to do is keep your back foot light and then just soft bend and straighten. Keep the weight back. That's three. Watch the knee that's hanging. Does it wobble, wobble, right? Four. And five, choice one, doing that same thing again. Choice two, you're gonna come to your toe and bend, straighten, bend, single leg squat. Three, four, five, up. Choice one, choice two, choice three. Just take that foot off the floor. One, two, three, four, five, and then everybody straight in the standing leg. Bring the other one to 90 degrees. Take the arms up. And then imagine someone's trying to pull your heel back, like this heel, right? The bent knees heel. Imagine they're trying to pull it back, but you're resisting. And release. Oh. <laughs> Everybody breathe. Just walk around. Right? So I do have this tendency, as you all know, to like go for it. Like hamstrings. So <laughs> hang in there with me. I promise we will stretch those babies out until they're happy. <clears throat> you can be near a wall, by the way. So left leg is forward, right foot is back. You're kind of on the ball mount here. The torso is upright. 
Here's the thing about balance. You bring your head down, you throw your balance off. So you wanna look forward, even if the eyes are looking down to find that balance point. Hands to hips, out, chest. Here we go, four, five. It's a soft bend. One, two, try to keep the weight in the center and not leaning forward. Four and five. Choice two, big toe. Here we, woo, <laughs> here we go. One, two, three, four, five, woo. Choice one, choice two, or lift that foot off the floor. One, two, three, yup, four, five, straighten your standing leg, find your balance, bring the knee to 90, level out your hip, try to pull the heel back isometrically, take the arms up, get really tall everybody, get tall, and breathe. And release. Oh, I love it. All right. Go wide on your mat, everybody. <laughs> Big deep hinge from those hips. Lean forward and then take the hands down to the floor. And find your breath. That's it, just breathe. We're stretching those hamstrings. We've been working them like crazy. We're almost done with them. And then turn your toes out, bend the knees, hands come to knees and come on up. And step those legs together, shake them out. You are going to need your blanket again, so if it's off to the side, grab it. We're going to put it under our knees one last time. So from the front of your mat, inhale, reach up. Exhale, take it down. Soften both knees and step back to downward facing dog. And then lower your knees to the floor. Grab your blanket. Put it underneath your knees again. <clears throat> now this one again is going to be optional. You need one block in front of you where your hands are going to go. You're going to step your right leg forward. <clears throat> and either, either you're here and you're going to bend the knee and do, this is pretty much what we did earlier. Or you're going to take that second block and see if you can get it between your sit bone and somewhere on your ankle. <laughs> I've done this a zillion times and now it won't stay. Just find that spot. I'll tell you what, let's go easier. Take it behind your knee. There we go. And squeeze. For some reason, it wasn't sticking. So take that behind the knee and squeeze your block. You don't have to go there, okay? So squeezing that block is keeping your hamstring contracted more. Good, breathe. Now, one, you're right here, you're happy as can be. Two, if that's your left knee that's bent, the block goes under your left hand. Your right hand does a big circle behind you and you see if you can find the foot, which is gonna be a problem with the block. <laughs> and breathe. That's it. You can just reach back to, by the way, and then release it, release your leg, slide your right foot back, and you're going to switch sides. So left foot forward, 
And again, there are two ways to do this. For some reason, I wasn't getting the grip I needed. So that's kind of what it would look like. Your sit bone to your heel. But let's stick with the block behind the knee. Squeeze it in. And both of your hands are on your block. And you're just finding this kind of sweet lunge. But the more you squeeze the block, the more the hamstring has to activate. Deep breath, everybody. Just squeeze your block if you can. If you cramp up, let go. If that block feels terrible, let it go again. And then one, you're here. Two, you're going to take the block under your right hand. You're gonna reach the left arm forward and then just reach that arm back. If you can find the foot with that block there, go ahead and do that. But don't worry, be happy. What a concept, be happy. That's it. And then release, if you can feel your block, you can just let that go too. Release the leg and come on down. Stretch it out. We're going to come on to our backs. We're going to need the blocks briefly and the strap for sure. So come on down. Once again, this is optional. <laughs> You're going to grab both of your blocks. You're going to tuck them both under your knees and you're gonna squeeze those blocks in place. Your hands can come underneath your sit bones just a little bit. The blocks are gonna stay together. Your knees are separated by probably, I don't know, hips width or a little more. From here, core work, you're gonna tap your toes and then just lift to 90, okay? So don't go too far. Tap, lift, Three, squeeze your blocks, four, five, six, and seven, eight, come on, nine, ten, and then just hold. Grab your blocks, let those blocks slide off to the side. Take both legs up straight. Bend both knees, both feet to the floor, not on your blanket. Press into both feet. Pull the heels back. We've started with this. Lengthen your tailbone, lift your hips, come into bridge pose. Shoulders can walk underneath and you can interlace your hands if you would like. Lengthen, feather your glutes muscles into your hamstrings and then pull the heels back to feather the hamstrings into the glutes. Kind of an interesting idea. It's not really, I don't think literally that, but you get the idea. Big deep breath. Lift all your toes, press into the big toe mounds. Lower the toes, lift the heels, optional. Woo! Lower down, lower down, ha <laughs> ha, and shake it out. We got one left and then I promise we're done, done. Yeah, especially given what time it is. Left knee to chest, straighten it up to the ceiling. Press your elbows to shoulders into the floor. Press into your right leg, lengthen your tailbone. Lift the leg up, see, or press in, lift the hips up. See if you can stay level. Good, lower down. Last one, other side. Press into your foot, lift the leg, push into the upper body, push into your foot and lift up. And lower down. Grab your strap. Take that strap around your foot. Take your right foot up to the ceiling, straighten your left leg. Soften your whole entire body. 
Just let this strap be super heavy in your hands. Big deep breath. Good, and with the strap around the ball mound, go ahead and point and flex. Point, flex, one more point and flex. Bend your left knee and put that foot on the floor. Release your strap and come into figure four. Once you're there, you can draw your knees up toward your chest. Try to stay fairly neutral on the sacrum without flattening the back completely. Big deep breath. Slide knee over knee, draw the knees to your chest. A lot of hip work, a lot of glute work here, a lot of hamstring work. Either you're here or you can go to cow face legs, just grabbing your feet, pulling the heels away from each other. I don't know about you, but I feel that stretch right where it's supposed to be. <laughs> Breathe. Good, release the feet, everybody. Undo the legs. Coming back to neutral, the strap around your left foot. Straighten that foot up to the ceiling. Straighten the right leg. Deep breath. Let's feel yourself soften down. And then bend your right foot, release your strap, come on, come to figure four on this side. Draw the knees to chest. Try to stay pretty much in the center of your sacrum. And then slide knee over knee. Bring both knees to chest. And then maybe cow face legs if you want to separate the heels. You can grab your shins too, by the way. And release, knee beside knee, go ahead and twist to the right. We're not gonna stay too long. Opening up the left side, just a simple, simple twist here. Know that you can use your block underneath that, those knees. And legs up, go to the other side. And knee center, your feet to the floor, getting ready for a Shavasana. If you happen to have your blocks and you would like them underneath the back of your thighs, it's more, re it's kind of restorative for the hamstrings while allowing the quads to relax as well. The arms go out to the side. Your whole body starts to settle down.
we let go of anything that is holding us tight, whether it be a thought or a muscle. And by the way, if you want to mute your own speaker so that you can stay in Shavasana for a long time, this would be a good time to do that. Soft jaw, soft belly. Go even softer. For those of you who are ready, just bend the knees and let your feet come to the floor. And feel your groundedness. And then allow those knees to come to chest and stretch out through your back, through your hips. Rock side to side. And allow the knees to go over to one side. And then press up. Come to your seat. Bring your hands to your heart, everybody. Let us fear less and love more. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, everybody. <sighs> if you enjoyed that, 